walking down in the ice that built up and out from the pier and we would walk on it until at least it started to crumble and groan and then we scampered off. One day Don and I got married on the pier. I'm not sure who Don is, Daddy. but uh, I was eight, he was nine, <laughs> and his sister, Wally, age five, was the maid of honor. The catwalk flooring has been removed now, I think this is from the pier, uh, but we went up there and went out to the lighthouse and walked all around it. Of course, we spent most summer days on the beach, and this is one of my favorite parts right here. Mom and Mill, is that Mildred, a no. friend? No, it's a friend. Friend, okay. Mom and Mill would come down in the evening with hot dogs, marshmallows, and watermelon, and we would make a fire and have a picnic. Not all the time, but enough. Mom would be pushing Tommy in the buggy. Tommy is a brother between Rich and I, that I never met, of course, uh, and, and in the buggy and would bring Dickie. Uh, Dickie is rich. Some days, Don and I would ride our bikes up to Jean Clock Park. It seems like 10 miles, but I'm not sure, and they had a nice beach there. Then if you continue up the road and end up on a bluff over the lake. I've been reading about a lot of erosion in those areas. Good memories of the time there. And that was an uh, email from 2015. Um, of course, a lot of my memories had to do with music. And Martha was doing a lot of old folk songs, you know, Jimmy Crack Corn and I Don't Care, which didn't interest me that much. Although it's history, it's an old song. But when she did Sloop John B, that was also being done by the Beach Boys at the time. This was early 60s. And so I thought, well, that, that makes that worthwhile. That's actually a song I might want to listen to or sing. But she was doing songs for other babies. She was doing songs at church. She was doing songs in nursing homes. And although we don't have any of the pictures of Martha in a nursing home in here, went to print right before Sue, my wife found some good pictures. Uh, one of them, or two of them, are uh, actually with Martha, myself, and Natalie singing in the house, in, in my mom's house on 105th Street. But the other one is in Bella Vita Nursing Home, and Martha has a guitar. It's kind of dark on the, on the monitor back there. When it, when it goes through, you'll be able to see it. And... Uh, uh, there's also uh, myself, Russell, and uh, Shyla, my daughter, and Natalie, my daughter. And uh, uh, Natalie and I are going to sing a couple songs, and you're certainly welcome to join in. It's, it's, they're really meant to be for everybody to, to enjoy. We'll do some more songs uh, at the house, but, uh, uh, but at the time when Natalie was in that photo, you were probably 10 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And now she's coming up on 41 and a lieutenant Two. colonel. So some time has gone by. Uh, I, I have some older pictures because she did a lot of family research. And so there was an uncle in California that had a lot of family history. And, and she was recording it and sent it to me and Rich. And uh, also a cousin. So we have sometimes cousins. There's cousins here today that haven't seen each other for 20 years. And, uh, and so there's other cousins. Don Anderson had done a lot of family research. And so Martha was kind of the, the key, the kingpin there, that she was the connection with all these folks. And, and I haven't, um, one uncle in California has since died before, several years ago. And so uh, I, I need to make better connection with the cousins that, that Martha was doing before. I did like this one picture in here. The reason I like it is because Rich has his tongue stuck out. <laughs> it got a little washed out in it. And then there's a bigger picture on the next page. But you can see on this page, uh, Martha is on the left side. Uh, probably, uh, it says age 14. And, uh, and my mom is on the right. And went by Betty, <laughs> although her name was Lois Elizabeth. One thing that when, when our mom was dying, we were taking care of her, and Rich's uh, daughter, Carrie, was, was helping. She had the day shift, I had the night shift. And uh, we started putting things together, just like you're writing down now, when I think of mom, I think of this. And so we look at that years later and we say, oh man, I forgot about that. <laughs> and uh, so that, that's helpful if you're able to write things down. In fact, if, if you're done, you can pass it up here. I'd be glad to read it to you. 
or if you'd rather just stand up if you want to say if anyone had a memory that they wanted to share with the group. And we can also do that now or later. Mm -hmm. Now or later. <coughs> okay, well, how about if I get the portfolios and bring them up here? Sure. A lot of these memories that Jim's not involved with go back to the Coast Guard station during the war. Um, I was pretty young, but, you know, I remember my sister taking care of me and pushing me around and having a brother and so on, but our biggest job there was to find the submarines. We were serious. They were out in the lake. The submarines were out there, and we were going to find them. So my dad would take us in a jeep, and we'd ride up and down the east. Said, Keep an eye out there. There could be a submarine just sitting out there. Never saw one, but we spent a lot of time in that Jeep. Uh, things that Martha was involved with, Jim was talking about singing for the groups. Uh, Richard, her husband, had actually got the guitar, and he wanted to play, and he was taking lessons and so on, and somewhere along the line, he just decided it wasn't something he could do. and. Gave it to Martha. Well, Martha had seven years of piano. She sang all the time in the choirs and so on. So she just started. And I'd go over and visit with her when they were living in smaller apartments. And she's strumming it. And I said, I don't know anything about it, but I know you got to move this other hand when you <laughs> strum it and so on. But she eventually taught herself. Um, during this time, I was the official uh, two men and a boy moving furniture for them. I was a football player, and so we'd be in a, we had, they had a, a, a basement apartment. Dick could not, I, he couldn't even, he had to walk around like this. <laughs> and and uh, they got, the first bed they ever got was a king size bed. I'd never seen a king size bed in my life. Uh, and I said, where? Where are you going to put that? <laughs> they put it in a room, and the only thing you could do is throw the cover all over the top of it. And that was it. And I said, I said, wouldn't it be easy if you slept your feet, head at this end? Because it was difficult to get in and out of the room. Uh, and that was the first apartment they ever had. And then they moved to Logan Square. Uh, and then the boys were born. And like I said earlier, I was able to move around the city quite freely. And back then, I don't know if you remember, but only only direct family members could visit a pregnant a, mm -hmm. a woman that just had a baby. So I'm I'm maybe in my late twenties, and Martha's seven years older. And I go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, I'm her husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go in there, and the nurses are all looking in there, looking at Martha. And this is David was born. And, uh, of course, I thought it was my job to cheer her up. So we're, we're having a good time laughing. And you know, If you make me laugh anymore, I'm going to hurt. I can't even talk anymore. I hurt so much. And the next day, I, I, Martha said, that wasn't so good. Richard didn't like you coming up there and pretending like you knew. <laughs> so I said, uh, well, she's got a twin brother. That's all. <laughs> Jim's going to do some music, and I guess she's going to be, he's going to be a compliment. He's going to have uh, yep. all of us sing, or you're yes. welcome to.